So UFC 286 just wrapped up, and if you've been following my Instagram, you will know that I've had a fair few subs <laughs> uh, during the card, but man, that was a great, great card. I've lost my voice because I was screaming the whole time during UFC 286. Uh, I didn't live stream, I was just watching it in my lounge, and I had a great time, dude. Leon Edwards won, I picked Leon Edwards to win. I will kind of give like a, a card breakdown as we go through, so we'll talk about that then. But this is all of my predictions for what I think the UFC is going to do next, or fights that make sense next. And with the main event... Uh, Leon Edwards is one. It's a weird one though. Like, what do we do? Like, I know it might seem a little bit obvious, but it's not really. Because if you do look at the UFC welterweight rankings, if I can find it, there's a lot of fighters that arguably have earned a cut title shot. Kamzat Chimaev is in the conversation, but he's not the guy that I'm predicting to uh, fight Edwards. Because I think he's moving up to middleweight. Dana White said he's moving up to middleweight. That'll be interesting to see. Colby Covington weighed in as the replacement. I do think that's most likely going to be the fight, regardless if you like it or not. I don't really, I think the fighter that should be the title shot is Bilal Muhammad, but we could get a real spanner in the works, because yeah, UFC 287, I believe it is Gilbert Burns versus Jorge Masvidal fight, and if Jorge Masvidal beats Gilbert Burns, we're getting Masvidal versus Edwards. We just are. So that could really throw a lot of spanners in the works. I've got Bilal Muhammad as the pick because he's arguably earned the title shot over everyone else. He's on a good win streak. He hasn't really beaten like top five, top three guys to get his title shot. Like you could argue maybe he's one fight away. But at this point, who else are you going to give it to? Colby Covington, who hasn't fought in a long time. Only coming off one win against Jorge Masvidal. Or uh, who else? Like who else are you going to give it to? Maybe Shavkat. But Shavkat arguably hasn't um, got it. his best winners over number eight ranked Jeff Neal. I think Shavkat's one fight away as well. So you could do Covington Edwards, you could potentially do Masvidal Edwards if, if Masvidal manages to win, or you could do uh, Muhammad Edwards and then you could do Muhammad versus Rachmanov if you go with Covington. There's a lot of options there, it's pretty hard to read. The next one is Justin Gaethje beat Rafael Fiziev, there was a 28-28 uh, a scorecard, a 10-8 to Gaethje in the third round, I thought that was a little bit odd, I don't think it was a 10-8 round. Some people don't like the scorecard. Some people think Fizzy have won two rounds. Personally, when I was watching, I did think that Gaethje won the last two rounds. I don't want to see him fight for a title next, though. On to fight Dustin Poirier. If he beats Dustin Poirier, he can get the title shot then. If you look at the rankings, it makes sense. Dustin Poirier is ranked number two. Gaethje number three. You could argue he could maybe take Dustin Poirier's number two spot. I don't want to see Gaethje fight Islam Akashev. Like, we don't give Justin Gaethje our title shots of one fight anymore. Fight Poirier, and then you can get the title if you beat him. And then I want to see Benil Dariush versus Charles Oliveira winner get the title shot. That's what makes sense to me. If Fiziev won and Charles Oliveira won, I would have given the title shot to Fiziev. But I want to see Gaethje, Gaethje fight uh, Dustin Poirier. He's number two ranked, I believe, as I just said. Makes sense to me. July, UFC 290, sell a bunch of pay-per-views on UFC Fight Week. Makes so much sense. International Fight Week, I mean, but you know what I mean. The next one is Gunnar Nelson beat Brian Barberina. Maybe a little bit of a weird one when I bring it up. But I will give you a couple of hints. So this guy is very old. He's one fight away from retirement. He's repeatedly said he's got one fight left and he's going to retire after that one fight. And he's a grappler and he's a very esteemed grappler. He wanted to fight Nate Diaz uh, as his retirement fight. He hasn't got that fight. And Gunnar Nelson, what better way to kind of represent pure BJJ than Gunnar Nelson versus Damian Meyer. Damian Meyer, I know he's 45 years old. But this guy has claiming that he's got one more fight left in him, and then he's going to retire after that one fight. So, let's do that. Let's do Damian Meyer versus Gunnar Nelson. I think that makes sense. Um, obviously, Gunnar Nelson's a lot younger than Meyer. But he's a jiu-jitsu guy, so is Damian Meyer. We don't want to give Damian Meyer a striker or someone that's going to KO him, you know, in the first rounds uh, in his retirement fight. I think Gunnar Nelson, Damian Meyer makes sense uh, to me, to be honest. Maybe you could do it in Brazil if there's, like, a fight night in Brazil later on this year. Jennifer Meyer beat Casey O'Neill. Casey O'Neill just wasn't really able to make the adjustments in the fight necessary. She was kind of just doing the same thing for the whole fight, and Jennifer Meyer was able to figure her out. Jennifer Meyer isn't very young. I think she's like 35 years old, and I think she's fought a lot of contenders recently as well, to the point where she can probably earn the right to fight an older fighter. So if you look to the rankings, I do have her matched up against Lauren Murphy, because I'm 99% sure she has not fought uh, Lauren Murphy before. They're both older fighters. I believe Lauren Murphy's 39. I think Jen Jen Jennifer Meyer's 35. I think that's a fight that makes sense. Uh, prelims of a pay-per-view sort of thing. Uh, main card of a fight night. I think that makes sense. Pretty highly ranked fight. And if Meyer wins this, then maybe wins two more fights. You could maybe get another title shot. You never really know. Marvin Vittori beat Roman Dolidze. 
This is a scorecard I'm not a fan of. I thought Roman Dolizzi won the first and third round. I wasn't very happy with it at the time, but I've kind of come to accept it. But I've got to watch the fight again. Um, with middleweight at the top of the rankings, there's kind of a lot of things you can do here. If you go to the middleweight and you go to the top, Whitaker doesn't have a fight booked, but he's already fought. <laughs> Vittori, Jared Kananir doesn't have a fight booked, and he hasn't fought um, Marvin Vittori. So you could do Vittori versus Kananir. You could do Vittori versus Whitaker. I don't want to see that. You could do Whitaker Kananir rematch. Like, who knows, dude? The top of the rankings has kind of been the same for a while. I've got Marvin Vittori to fight Drikus Duplessis. I think that fight makes sense. I know I did just match up with Drikus Duplessis, I believe, with Jared Kananir only like one or two weeks ago. But I think this fight might make a little bit more sense. So I've got Drikus Duplessis taking on Marvin Vittori. Vittori's a guy that's known to push a pace. He's a guy that's very hard to finish. Drikus Duplessis is a guy that is known to slow down because he can't actually breathe out of his nose. And he's a finisher. So if someone's going to finish Marvin Vittori, it would probably be Drikus Duplessis. So that's probably like a fight night main event. Maybe you could do something in South Africa or even into Italy. I know UFC's talking about putting on events in Italy. I know there's an event going to be in France later on this year. You could do it in France. But um, there's a lot of options there. I think that could be a good fight to make. Jack Shaw submitted Mukbun Americani. And I'm going to be honest, I've got absolutely no idea what you do with him. He was number 15 ranked at Bantamweight. So I don't want to kind of give him like a bottom ranked guy at, fly at Featherweight. Sorry. So I'm giving him Pat Sabatini. It's a very rough matchup for him, I will admit. But uh, Pat Sabatini, borderline ranked guy, come off that loss to Damon Jackson, who was borderline ranked himself. I think it would make sense. Uh, both guys are pretty good grapplers. Pat Sabatini is kind of more like a more of a grappler than Shaw is, arguably. I know Shaw is a very well-rounded fighter, but he's a pretty good striker himself. I think that makes sense. Jack Shaw versus Pat Sabatini. Chris Duncan got it done over Omar Morales. I thought Duncan won the fight. Um, it was interesting, though. It was good to see Chris Duncan get tested a bit. It was good to see Duncan eat big shots. Uh, but he's going to eat a lot of shots in this future fight. He's an entertaining fighter. He's pretty big for 155. I know Omar Morales fought at 145, I believe, in the past. Is that correct? But um, Duncan looks huge in there. And I want him to fight Trigger Peak. Once again, I matched up Trigger Peak with someone else. I believe it was Darius Flowers a few weeks ago. But this would be a banger, dude. We've seen Chris Duncan go to war before on Dana White's Contender Series. We've seen Trevor Pete go to war before on uh, on Dana White's Contender Series. We've seen him go to war in the UFC against Eric Gonzalez. Pay-per-view prelim. This is a fight. UFC 290 on the John Jones card. Get the crowd excited. This is a banger. And it deserves to be in front of a crowd at UFC 290, in my opinion. Janelle Ashmoles beat Sam Patterson. Really bad KO. Probably a late stoppage, to be fair. Put Sam Patterson out badly, man. He's a big dog as well. Um, it's interesting, though, because Janelle Ashmoles is a very good grappler. So let's test that grappling. How good of a grappler is Janelle Ashmoles? Can Janelle Ashmoles push the grappling against the striker? Nazim Sadikov is that guy I think we should test him against. Sadikov's a very good striker. He beat Evan Elder in a fight. You could argue maybe potentially he was losing. He won by Dr. Stoppage. We've seen him struggle with the takedowns before. We've seen him get his own takedowns before. You know, Lesh Miles versus Nazim Sadikov, if it took place on the feet, would be a very interesting fight. If it took place on the ground, it would be a very interesting fight. I think it makes sense. I like it a lot. Muhammad Makayev beat Jafel Philho. Whatever I predict for Muhammad Makayev next is probably not going to happen because Muhammad Makayev, I think he's going to be out for another seven months. I think he's going to come back in October in Abu Dhabi. And I know he's kind of got that beef with Jake Hadley, and you could do Jake Hadley versus Muhammad Makayev. But Hadley took no damage whatsoever. He's probably going to want to get in there soon. I think Makayev's looking up the rankings, but not too far up the rankings. So I've got him against Sumo Najiri. But Sumo Najiri might want to fight soon too. He's taking a lot of time off himself. But man, he took a lot of damage against Matt Schnell. So it would make sense for him to take a year off or a year and a bit or so. Muhammad Makayev, he's ranked number 12. I don't think he'll move up in the rankings after beating Jafel Philho. Did he look unstoppable? Did he look like someone that's going to be a champion within the next six months? Within the next 12 months, sorry. Not really. I want to see Makayev kind of build up a little bit slower, man. I don't want to see Makayev build up super, super fast. So, I've got Makayev, um, Yitsu Marajiri in October. I know it's a long, long, long time away. So, maybe you could give him the winner of Bruno Silva versus, uh, no, sorry, Alan Asimento versus Tim Elliott, even. It's hard to say. Or you could give him Jake Hadley. If Jake Hadley beats the opponent that I've got him matched up against, you could do him versus Jake Hadley in October. That would make sense to me as well. Lots of different options you can do, but I do have Sumana Jiri. I do believe that Sumana Jiri is ranked at number 12, I think. No, no, number... 
Oh dear, where am I looking, dude? Uh, he is ranked number 13. He's below Mohamed Mikhaev, but Mikhaev, I don't want to see him fight these guys. Maybe he could beat Matt Schnell, but Alex Perez would be a fun fight too, to be fair. Amir Albazi would be interesting. I don't think he would beat Albazi, Nicolau, Royval, or any of these guys yet. Give him time. I think we've got to give Mikhaev time. Let's not rush him, dude. Let's give him time. So let's do that. The next one is going to be Lorraine Murphy uh, against Gabriel Santos. This is another scorecard. I think it was interesting. You can't be mad. You can't be mad at this fight at all. I personally think Gabriel Santos won the first two rounds. But you can't be mad at the scorecards. You can't. It was such a close, competitive fight. I Once again, I thought Santos won the fight. But no matter what you think of this fight, at the end of the day, it just showed how good Gabriel Santos is. He went to a split decision with Lerone Murphy on like, what, like six, seven, eight days notice. If he was on a full camp, you could argue he would have won the fight. You really could argue that. So... I've got Lerone Murphy. I think he's borderline ranked. Let's give him someone that's borderline ranked. Let's try to give him someone that fought for a ranking, but lost. So he lost when he was fighting for a ranking. Let's give him Damon Jackson. I think that makes sense. If he beats Damon, Jan Jan Damon Jackson, give him the number 15, 14, 13, 12 sort of ranking guy. Let's do that. So Damon Jackson just got knocked out by Dan Ige. Or even maybe if you really wanted to rush him, you could probably give him Dan Ige himself. Maybe. You could do that too. But um, I think we're going to do... Um, Damon Jackson versus Lerone Murphy. If Lerone Murphy wins that fight, which I think he would, considering uh, Damon Jackson decided to strike the whole fight with Dan Ige, I think you give him a ranked opponent. I think he deserves a ranked opponent potentially now, but I want to see him. I want to see him soon, within the next six months, hopefully, fighting Damon Jackson. Christian Leroy Duncan. He beat Dusko Todorovic. Unfortunately, it wasn't the coming out party for Christian Leroy Duncan. He probably wanted. But even then, he looked a lot more technical than he did in his Cage Warriors fights. This guy's making improvements. He's looking really good. He technically still won by first round KO. It wasn't what he wanted, but he probably was going to get a KO anyway. He was looking really good on the feet. Unfortunate that he, he won by injury, sorry. Um, let's find out how good is Christian Leroy Duncan really. Like, he's got the win over... We've got the win over Dusko. How good is he, though? Punahali Soriano would uh, test him, you know what I mean? Punahali Soriano... He's 2-3 and three in his last five. He's also beat Dusko himself by first run KO. He's going good. He's, he's looking okay. He's not. He's beaten guys that he should, like Dolce. He probably should have beaten Roman, but um, Roman looked incredible in that fight. Um, yeah, let's do that. Punahali Soriano versus Christian Leroy Duncan. Let's find out how good is Christian Leroy Duncan, really. Jake Hadley beat Malcolm Gordon. I want him to fight Mikhaev, but I don't think he's going to fight Mikhaev next. So let's do him versus Tyson Nam. Very winnable fight for Jake Hadley with his style. He's a grappler for the most part. So I think he would just take down Tyson Nam and sub him. I know Tyson Nam's got really good takedown defense, but he just coming off a submission loss. I think he would get subbed by Jake Hadley. Let's do that. Maybe within like the next few months, like July, August. And then if he beats Tyson Nam, he could probably fight Muhammad Mikhaev then. I think that would make sense. Let's do that. Joanne Wood beat Luana Carolina. This is one of those situations where I feel like Joanne Wood has once again earned the right to fight an older fighter. Because she's not too young herself. I think she's about 37 years old. Um, yes, yeah, she is 37 years old. And uh, she hasn't really been on the best run. She's been fighting really good top contenders. But I believe she's unranked now. So let's give her a ranked opponent. <laughs> so I know I said she deserves an older fighter. I couldn't really find an older fighter around her age range that she hadn't fought before. Joanne Wood versus uh, Lauren Murphy probably makes sense. Maybe more sense than Jennifer Meyer versus Lauren Murphy, but... I think they even fought each other in the past, but whatever. Joanne Wood versus Tracy Cortez is what I've got. She's a young, up-and-coming fighter. Tracy Cortez isn't really dominating fighters, though. She's not really looking absolutely incredible, so I feel like it's a winnable fight for Wood. I know Wood's been fighting a lot of grapplers. I know she's been fighting a lot of, a lot of guys. Girls, sorry, they're going to take her down, but... I'm sorry. It just is what I do. If you want to make another run in the rankings, I think Joanne Wood's pretty close to retirement, though, so maybe she does want to fight an older fighter like Lauren Murphy and maybe someone else in the rankings in the division, sorry, but that's what I've got. Joy Herbert. Um, I think he beat Ludovic Klein 29-28, but because of the point... Was it a point deduction? I can't really remember what happened. Yeah, it was. It was a weird point deduction due to uh, knees to the groin, but I thought Joy Herbert was going to win the fight anyway. So let's kind of reward Jai Herbert. Let's pretend Jai Herbert won. Someone just upped the rankings. Jordan Levitt, he's 11-2. and two. He's coming off a win. He lost to another Englishman. And Paddy Pimblett, you can find another Englishman. And uh, Jai Herbert. Jai Herbert did take a little bit of damage in that fight. I think he had a cut above his eye. No, or whatever. The point is, uh, I think Jordan Levitt versus Jai Herbert makes sense. June, July, 
August, September, some kind of that area. And then Veronica Hardy beat Juliana Miller. Looked amazing. Made Juliana Miller not look that good, like, whatsoever, to be brutally honest. But at the end of the day, Veronica Hardy, she hasn't been on the best run herself. You know what I mean? She's what? Two and four in her last six? Let's 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 give her an opponent that she can beat. And if she can beat Courtney Casey, who is the fighter that I've got her matched up against, now we can move her up the rankings a bit. You know what I mean? So I think Courtney Casey versus Veronica Macedo makes sense to me. Now that I see Antonina Shevchenko's name as well, does Antonina have a fight book? No, she doesn't. They could also potentially make sense herself. So a few options for Veronica Hardy. Because she hasn't looked, um, sorry, because she hasn't fought in a long time, and she only looked great against Juliana Miller, who's only 3-1 and one and very green herself, although she looked incredible in that fight, she's still 2-4 and four in the UFC. Let's not push her too much, you know what I mean? Let's give her a winnable fight. Let's give her a fight she can win. Courtney Casey makes sense to me. She can beat Courtney Casey. We can push her for, further up the rankings, and maybe um, fighters that are like top 25, top 30 of the division. I don't think there's that many fighters in the division, but you know what I mean anyway. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.